Good morning, pot pickers. This morning, although I'm not smoking a pipe, I do want to talk about pipe smoking. I'm smoking a Monte Cristo number no. two. A very tasty, big number, in fact. Um, this uh, cigar comes out of a three pack. And um, when I got it, I think it was pretty fresh because I'd had one of them and they weren't that great. They've been in my humidor for uh, probably about six months, maybe 10 months, or something like that. What a difference. Um, anyway, so what I want to talk about. As we approach March, which uh, I'm not sure who actually started the ball rolling with uh, March Mesh and Madness, but I got it from Ben Unicorn Piper. And um, Ben being the uh, style guru and style leader and uh, example setter um, in our current generation of the YTPC, well, one of them anyway. Anyway, March Mission Madness. So you saw on my channel I bought um, the Rattray Bent Billiard Mission Lined Pipe. Um, I just thought that if it's going to be smoked for a month non-stop, that I'd be happier with it being essentially a briar pipe. And I wouldn't have the risk of dropping it and smashing it or breaking the shank or something like that. So it just seemed logical to me to go for one for uh, Mesham Line Briar. Because I do a lot of my pipe smoking on the move. So it, just, it, it was just logical. So in order to uh, decide whether or not... A month is a long time, you know, and although I love pipe smoking, I'm not, um, I'm not about to sacrifice a month's worth of pipe enjoyment. For, uh, for March Mersham, I'm going to call it the three M's. For the three M's, um, yeah, as I say, I love the YTPC, but I want to enjoy my pipe as much as possible. A day here or there to, to sacrifice for an experiment, no problem, but a month? Come on, guys. Anyway, so I wanted to make sure that I'd be happy with that, so I wanted to smoke it in advance. In a couple of days that I've had the pipe, I've smoked it uh, pretty much all the time, except for late last night when I smoked the Nero. Um, I've had quite a few bowls in the Meerschaum. I've actually jumped from uh, straight Virginias to English to London Fog. And I'm not hugely impressed. Granted, I've only smoked it for a couple of days, or a day, day and a half. Um, but I've got to say, and I never really appreciated this point before, but I've got to say that the briar does lend something to the overall flavor profile of a tobacco that you're smoking. Now I dare say that there'll be some tobaccos where the briar lends its flavor detrimentally. And in such a case, if you want a really clean, honest, pure flavor from the tobacco with nothing added, then yes, a Meerschaum would be the way to go. But I think that our palates are so used to um, the flavor profile in a briar that many times the tobacco that we're used to tastes different and odd. Not necessarily bad, but it tastes different and odd to what our palates are used to. So for instance, to give you an example, I smoked some uh, vintage Syrian, H.H. H. McBan vintage Syrian yesterday in the Meerschaum line pipe. And I have to say, I didn't really enjoy it. It wasn't bad, I just didn't enjoy it as much as I usually do. Um, see, for me, th there's a double whammy here because I'm smoking a filtered pipe and a mission pipe. So the mission pipe itself dries out your smoke and it cleans and purifies the flavors. It makes the flavors much more honest. Um, and, and a filter, to some extent, does the same thing. It removes the moisture, a lot of the moisture, um, and 
it does clean up. It kind of takes off the edges, if you like. And for many people, that's not a good thing because it removes part of the flavor profile. Um, so with a Michelin pipe, which is filtered, it's a double whammy. And I guess it's possible that too much is being removed from, uh, although it's because you're getting the, the stark clean flavors because of the Meerschaum bowl, and then you're getting another percentage shaved off by the filter. So for me, um, it didn't really work out as an ideal situation. And whether I would want to smoke that for a month or not, I don't think so. Um, London Fog being a good, a good example, it's, it's a tobacco that I'm smoking virtually all the time when I smoke a pipe. And um, I've yet to find a pipe that compares to it in the Nirup, to be honest. Speaking of the Nirup, I'm amazed. I, I put up a post the other day, I think two or three days ago, the Danish pipe shop has got two of those small little chubby bulldogs. Um, on their website at the moment. One is a smooth and one is a, a sandblasted. And I thought they'd go in seconds, I really did. I put a post up on IG. And on Facebook. They're still there. At least they were as of last night. Um, and if I had the disposable income now, I would probably buy another one. I really would. It, it just... Obviously the flavor aspect of it is down to the briar, but the shake works very, very well. It's it's uh, got a really nice thick bowl, and it's really close to the face, so the center of gravity is great, so it clenches very well, despite it being quite a weighty pipe. It's around the 60 gram mark, 65 gram mark, um, which, if that bowl were to be on the end of a Canadian or a Liverpool, that would be impossible to clench. But on the end of a short shank, it, it works very well. So I'm going to continue experimenting with the the Rattray lined pipe, the Mission lined pipe, um, and see if things improve a bit. But um, as we stand, I think it's unlikely that I will be participating in 3Ms. It's a great idea. I have to really, maybe I'll try with my other Mission pipe, um, which is not filtered. Maybe that's an idea and see how that, I mean, I've smoked it a bit but I, uh, when I got it, but I haven't really smoked it since, probably for the same reason. I just don't enjoy it as much as a briar. Some people absolutely love the clean, honest flavors that you get from a mushroom. Um, Ed, Grandpa Cavendish, he, the, most of his videos now are with mushroom pipes. Um, Bremen pipe smoker, always a mushroom pipe, nearly always a mushroom pipe. Some people are, 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 are devotees of Mission pipes, a lot of people. And uh, purists probably would say that were it not for the fact that it's a, a very breakable pipe, you know, they would smoke them all the time. But I've got to say, I do enjoy the flavor, the nuttiness, a little bit of a, a rounded flavor that it adds, that the briar adds to a tobacco smoke. It seems to work for me. Anyway, um, this number two, Monte Cristo number two, is tasting very, very good. I'll have to acquire some more. Very tasty indeed. Um, I was watching, um, I was watching Tim and Bradley. I've spoken to about them a few times. They've now split. One of them is uh, Cigars Daily, Tim, and Bradley is um, TNT Cigars. He, he kept the original company. If you want an entertaining cigar uh, channel, check them out. TNT Cigars. Um, uh, he's now uh, Bradley is now partnering up with Dana, who's who was one of the warehouse workers, um, and she's uh, now presenting together with Bradley. And they're actually very entertaining as well. Um, I think they're a great pair. Um, they bounce off each other very, very well. I would definitely recommend that you check them out. Tim, um, he's now starting his own company. His website just went live yesterday. Um, and he's already got quite a lot of cigars up on there. 
I still don't know what the UK situation is, whether he's going to be prepared to ship to the UK or not. Why did I come to them? Yeah, so I saw a video went of uh, Tim and Bradley, which will be under TNT Cigars, um, of them when they were together and they were smoking Cuban cigars. I think they had the Monte Cristo number two, in fact. I think it was the number two, or possibly the H. Chapman number two, I don't remember. Um, I think it was the Monte Cristo. It's just interesting to see, I suppose I'm the same when I talk about non-Cuban cigars, but it's interesting to see how Americans talk and rate, talk about and rate Cuban cigars. And to be honest, how they completely get it wrong. Um, which I can't blame them for, they have no uh, real experience with it. But um, I've lost my track of uh, my line of thought. I don't remember why I just brought them up. Now, if I was Billy Connolly, I'd be able to take it right back to. Uh, I've been overdosing on Billy Connolly the last few days. I tell you, you want to see a genius at work, just just search Billy Connolly and let YouTube steer you through his uh, body of work. Unbelievable. There is one clip of him being interviewed by David Letterman. Wow. That was the most awkward interview I've ever seen with Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly is he's, he's a free spirit when you... He's kind of in the same way as... Uh, there is some elements of comparison between him and Robin Williams, the, the late Robin Williams, another genius. Robin Williams was, uh, you know, he was on fire, you know, he, he was just a completely a loose cannon. And, you know, you let him go and he'll just go. He, he can just talk and talk and talk and go for it. And he's like on steroids and he'll go for an hour nonstop. Billy Connolly is quite similar, but not quite on such a strong dosage of, of uh, steroids but his mind is on steroids unbelievable um, and when you're interviewing him if the interviewer is, doesn't have humility you're wasting your time the interviewer needs to let the guy soar he needs to let him just go with the flow and when you're interviewing geniuses like Billy Connolly and Robin Williams and people of that ilk they're the star of the show not the interviewer and you need to let them shine, you need to let them do their thing. They will have come with some headlines prepared in their mind, but then their brains just go with it. And there's a particular interview with David Letterman, and he completely stumped um, and muted Billy Connolly, which is, it's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, why get a guy like Billy Connolly on your show if you're not gonna let him shine? And um, it, it was like, it was just cringeworthy watching both of them trying to salvage something out of a, cra a train crash, basically, of an interview. I encourage you to go find it. I mean, it's very possible that there's more than one interview with David Letterman. They may have tried again or, or had a better one before, but for, try and find the one. And you'll, as soon as you watch it, you'll see, if you look at the comments, you'll see people saying how bad it was. Um, and the key, I know this is completely off uh, piece here at the moment on um, this subject, but uh, that seems to be the way my videos go these days. Apologies if that bothers you. Um, but uh, yeah, try and find that interview. It's, it's uh, an eye opener into how the lack of humility can totally destroy a situation. I usually like David Letterman, I must be honest. Um, not quite sure about his beard these days. Not quite sure. Doesn't quite suit him. Looks like a caricature of himself. But uh, I do like his interviews for, for the most part. Um, but uh, on this particular occasion, absolute train crash. Ladies and gentlemen of the Leaf, it is time for me to depart.
until the next time. I'm going to continue to enjoy this Monte Cristo number two. In the 15 minutes or so that we've been talking, I've got down about just over the first third. Quite a spicy little number once you get into it. The first third is really tasty, sweet, a little bit of fruit, a little bit of coffee, but mostly it's a kind of a chocolatey, kind of woodsy flavour. Um, but this one has rested very nicely, so there's a nice little bit of richness in there as well. A little bit of sweetness, a little bit of burnt sugar. Um, if, a, if a cigar has been well rested, then um, the richness starts to come through early on, then you know you're in for a, a, a treat. So, I'm going to bid you adieu, and um, I will no doubt catch you on the next one. I hope you all have a great day, and we are looking forward to the weekend, which is almost upon us. Catch you on the next one. Uh, oh, by the way, um, <laughs> it's almost like a Colombo. Just one more thing. Um, my uh, phone cradle has broken again, so I'm back to the old vibratory one. I've still got to find a decent one. It snapped the other one because I'm probably using it too much, moving it around and adjusting it for FaceTime and then for facing forward, and it, it just snapped. So hopefully... We'll get another one soon, but I hope it wasn't too disturbing on this occasion. Catch you on the next one. I really am going this time. Ta-da!